take control of your network with Glasswire. For more information, check the link below. What's up guys, CP Mighty here back with another video and today we're taking a quick review and a bit of a look at the MSI B360 gaming motherboard. Now this is definitely not a super in-depth or a full review but I did get my hands on it and did get to spend some time with this motherboard so let's go ahead and take a look. Now the B360 Arctic and the H360M Arctic are very similar motherboards with the definite aesthetics being first and foremost and again with a stunning white visual these guys look really really pleasing to the eye. These guys are accented with a super sweet set of grey accents and also to a couple black accents and definitely fit the part when it comes to looking like a very high-end motherboard. And whilst they may look a little bit plain in first impressions, digging a little deeper we do see that it offers some great features without costing an arm and a leg as some of these super high-end Z370 boards do. Again taking a closer look at visuals, MSI has taken a really interesting approach to covering the entire motherboard in a really nice white colour. From the PCIe slots, RAM dims and also to VRM heatsinks, everything has a really nice covering. On top of this we get the black and also two grey accents that really set it off and as a fan of the MSI Crate series, as you can kind of see by the Crate logo behind me, they are a really nice set of aesthetics being white and black. So personally I'm really digging this colour scheme. And in typical 2018 fashion we also do get a small splash of RGB. RGB LEDs. In terms of the audio divider, however, you can have them toggled to white, so if you really don't want those colours there and you're a bit more of just a stealth white fan, you can definitely turn them on to white or you just turn them off, thanks to the fact that they're compatible with MSI's Mystic Lighting software, so that's a really nice feature there. Spec-wise, we are looking at the B360 chipset, which is the latest release out of Intel in the new 360 or the 300 series lineup, with up to 64GB of DDR4 RAM support in dual channel mode, a single M.2 slot with five SATA ports and also to two 16x physical slots in terms of our PCI connectivity, there's definitely a lot going on. In terms of LAN, we are powered by the Intel L219V controller, which isn't too bad for an Intel NIC. Other standouts include dual Realtek ALC892 codex, USB 3.1 Type-C as well as Type-A Generation 2 support, so definitely getting a lot of uh, connectivity for our systems here. Not to mention it'll also to support just about every modern Intel CPU all the way up to the i7 family. So really anything from your Pentium and Pentium Gold all the way through to your top tier i7 will work no worries and pairing this guy up with sort of like a mid to high end i5 is definitely a not too bad option. Now though with that being said keeping in mind this is the B360 chipset so whilst you can throw i7s in there there is no overclocking support so I do recommend picking up a non-K SKU and this guy for a really nice looking system but you don't have to break the bank to get some decent performance. Now actually jumping in and building with this guy I have to say I didn't have too many problems. Whilst the white definitely will show dust more than a black motherboard will over time in terms of like a dark grey coating, overall it wasn't a too bad board to build on. The large PCI Express release tabs definitely made removing video cards really really nice and gone are the days of the silly little flimsy tabs, really nice to see modern uh, technology coming in here. And the overall fit and finish of this motherboard definitely was on point. But one thing that did stand out to me straight away was the second PCIe power connector. Now I have actually have no idea what this guy is actually even here for, presumably it's there to offer more power, obviously it's there to offer more power to the motherboard, but actually what it powers is still a little bit of a mystery. Taking a look at the website, there is no reference to this guy, and also to taking a look at the manual, the only reference to this guy is a pinout for the power connections if you're doing some diagnostics. There's no real feature about this, there's no mention of this, I can't exactly find anywhere what this guy actually does, and taking a look at the motherboard doesn't really reveal much, as the traces are all inside the motherboard, so you can't even see where they're really going. Sure, you could probably work things out, but honestly I couldn't really work out what this guy does. Taking an educated guess, I would assume that this is for things like the USB-C for fast charging other devices, and also to giving additional power to all the extra 1x slot and PCI Express 16x slots if you want to run a bunch of peripherals. I really don't think this is adding any extra power to the CPU socket, as that is handled by an 8-pin 
one array already, so we're not really sort of lacking on the power side in terms of CPU side. I do believe it's things like accessories and other things that you'll be adding to the motherboard that would be using this power. Much like what we've been seeing on other motherboards in the more higher end classes and overclocking classes, where we would be expecting to see things like Molex connectors rather than PCI Express power. Now, why there isn't a Molex connection, I'm not exactly sure, and why they went with PCI Express, I'm not exactly sure. And honestly, taking a look at any other motherboard on the market, we also too don't see this type of feature. Heck, even on MSI's own lineup, we don't see this kind of a feature at all. So again, I'm not exactly sure 100% why this guy is here, but again, taking an educated guess, I'm gonna say that it's probably for accessories and other things on the board. However, if you do know a little bit more concrete than I do, uh, let me know down in that comment section. Again, I could not find anywhere that would mention what on earth this thing is even for. But the rest of the build went off without a hitch. And whilst I don't exactly have it sitting here today because it did have to go off to its rightful owner, the overall experience of building with the system wasn't too bad. However, you will want to keep in mind that the M.2 slot doesn't have a shroud on it, so if you are looking at buying a bare bones PCB kind of designed M.2 slot uh, SSD, you will need to keep in mind that it's going to be sticking out like a sore thumb or sticking out like an M.2 SSD on a motherboard without a cover. So if you are going to be throwing in a uh, M.2 SSD, try to steer clear of those not so great looking ones and grab one that's either a black PCB or grab yourself a heatsink to go over it to kind of cover things up because again, unfortunately, there is no shroud on this guy. The inclusion of a lot of fan headers was also too really nice with three up the top right hand corner for front and also two top mounted fans, a few down the bottom for basement style fans and also two, two around the CPU area for dual fan CPU coolers or if you want to get some rear fan action that would totally be not too bad. Overall fan headers were definitely one feature I really did enjoy with this board. However with that being said on the downside this board is actually still lacking in a couple things. First off a lack of anything more than a 16x or 1x PCI Express slots and whilst a lot of accessories these days are moving to either 16x or 1x it still would have been nice to see the option to have some other kind of connectivity for other PCI Express devices again really not that many these days are using anything else than 1 and 16x but again it would have been nice to see maybe an 8x or something else in there to give us a little bit of a variation on top of this the SATA ports definitely were nice to have five of them for a nice storage setup however there is still one for some reason facing upwards that I just don't like. For me, all the stuff down the right hand side should all be right angle connectors because it makes so much more sense. Thankfully, a lot of these are actually right angle connectors and you could just use the four that are already right angle connectors and leave that weird upright facing one. But honestly, I was not a fan of having that one random SATA port just facing upwards. I'm sure there's a reason as to why they've done this, but Honestly, from a kind of a consumer mentality, it really doesn't make that much sense. The rest of the connectors were also too nice. We've got things like 3.0 USB and other things like that, but I would have also too again liked to have seen them on a right angle connector. This is something that personally gets me every single day. I wish more motherboards had right angle connectors. It would clean the look up so much and go well with the rest of the clean looking aesthetic. It just kind of is a little bit let down by having those straight angle connectors. Sure, maybe a bit of compatibility issue with some cases but all in all for me personally I'm sure a lot of people can agree I would definitely love to see a right angle connector definitely not a deal breaker for 99.99% of us but still something that I'm going to complain about until more motherboards adopt a right angle connector all in all though the b360 arctic board from MSI has really grabbed my attention and definitely really impressed me with its attention strictly on the visual side it is definitely looking great and also to bring some features along to back it up onboard audio was solid and IOWISE was definitely not lacking at all for a board in this class. The white design leads itself really great for a lot of RGB kind of LED type of builds here in 2018 and really is a nice little board at that. Delivering great aesthetics, decent specs, decent performance, but without the price tag that comes along with super top tier motherboards. It's really awesome to see finally some lower spec 300 series motherboards coming out to the market. And although snakes in the crate series would have been nice as I'm a big fan of the MSI crate series, I reckon snakes would have looked pretty cool on this motherboard. Either way, the aesthetic is definitely on point. But let me know down in that comment sections, what do you think of this motherboard? Do you like the white theme or do you prefer something a little bit more stealth like a black motherboard? Let me know down below. If you 
want to pick up this motherboard, I've left links down in that description box so you can go ahead and grab it there. And other than letting me know what you think of the visuals, also do let me know if you'd like to see a longer format review because I've really grabbed my attention with this motherboard, absolutely enjoyed my time with it. Either way guys, thanks all for watching, I'll catch you all in the next one.